And this is, we're going to start this study on deception. The word of God, we know all throughout scripture, is called a sword. All right, we talked about this a little bit. But it's called a sword. And I want y'all to think about this. A sword, what is a sword before it's a sword? It's just a piece of metal, right? It's a piece of metal that's put into what? Fire. It's put into the iron, right? To the, uh, if you, uh, there's, a, there's a show called Forged where they do old school forging. And so, or for, so they put these things in there and they beat them. And they harden them, right? And it takes a long time to get them right and shape them right. But the sword has to go through fire to become a sword. The word of God, I assure you, and if you don't know anything about church history or about Jewish history, this sword has been through the fire. Has it not? Yeah. It has been through everything. It's been through uh, people trying to get rid of it. This, this book was the... The fire for the martyr's feet. They would just throw the books at their feet and let them, you see? It's been scrutinized. It's been scientifically analyzed. It's been everything from sunup to sundown, and it's still here. Amazing, right? It's been through the fire. Now, who is it, and I wrote the word right there, that wields a sword? It's a swordsman, right? Swordswomen. There's women out here. Swordswomen. <laughs> swordsmen. Now, a swordsman, I want you to think about this. Boys this age, back in the day when swords were a prevalent thing, when they were using swords on the battlefield, they would, when they were young, they were taught to desire to learn how to use a sword, right? And so when they were young, they would take this thing and they would pick it up, oh, see how heavy it is, right? And they would practice with it and they would get older and they would get better. They would learn offensive defensive tactics, right? They would learn enemy tactics. They would learn how to pull it out on the battlefield, use it on the battlefield because it's different than using it when you're sparring, right? There's all these different kind of things that they had to learn. Well, as a swordsman, you, well, let's put it this way. We need to understand that we are on a battlefield, spiritual battlefield. We need to understand that. And every one of us in here who are Christian are swordsmen. The reason I put this up here has nothing to do with deception. It has zero to do with deception. But the reason I put this here is because you must learn how to wield your sword. And this is the thing. If the sword that you have on the battlefield, you have no practice, you have no talent, you have no skill, you have no knowledge of it, it's just sitting on your hip. What does it become? It becomes a weight. That's it. And you're just dragging it around. And the enemy who does know the sword can come and take your sword and use it against you. Yeah. I want you to think about that. The reason I put this up here is because one simple truth has to be dug into. And much of the Bible is like that. There are a lot of things on the surface, but Paul talks about the meat to get in and dig in to be a workman. To, to study to show thyself the truth. Be diligent at getting into the word and finding the truth of God. Most Christians are not proficient swordsmen. Yeah. They're not. Right. Mo a lot of Christians have the Bible sitting on the shelf and they claim to be a Christian. But they have no idea. They know the simple things. And this is the reason we're doing this study. Because many Christians know the simple terms. And I promise you, after we get done with this and you see how there are going to be many that leave the faith because they have, because a lot of the things that you're being deceived or the people who are being deceived with are the exact same terms that are in this Bible. But you have no clue how it works. You have no clue how to use the sword against the enemy. You remember, the Lord Jesus was in the wilderness. He used, the, Satan used the sword against the Lord. And what did he use back? He knew how to use the sword. And he used the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, against him. He was the word of the living word of God. But he's an example of how we need to be proficient and be able to answer the wicked with the sword. All right? So let's get into this. Our target verses... 
And we're gonna, this, these are going to be the target verses continuing on. Our 1 Timothy 4.1 and Matthew 24. We'll start at 1 Timothy 4.1. Expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Right? Who can tell me what a doctrine of devils is? Yes. Uh, I'd say it's a doctrine specifically meant to deceive. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Following a cult. Okay. What's that? One of them folks from Salt Lake City. One of them folks from Salt Lake City. Well, the word doctrine means teaching. Right. So it's 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 a deceptive teaching, you know, that Satan uses mixed with some truth. Very good. Oh, Very good. Mormon. They said they're openly in here in America, and it's like flip flops and the whole thing's upside down. Right. Oh, there's there's a lot of stuff in Mormonism. We should do a study on that as well. But let's start off with this. So the word expressly, ratos. It means stated specific terms. The spirit speaks specifically. That's what it means. In the latter times, Pusteros, it just means last. In the last times. Latter. So you see old writers who say former or latter. So the first sentence or the last sentence. That's what it means. To give heed. Prosecco. So people are going to give heed. Now this word right here is actually a it's actually a boating term. And it basically it means uh, a boat pulling up to the dock or pulling up to the shore and touching it. Right? To come near. That's one that's one of the main reasons for our uh, terms for it. But what he means in this is to turn your attention to. Turn attention to. Or to attach yourself, <laughs> attach oneself. So the spirit speaks specifically. In the last times, people are going to attach themselves or give attention to seducing, seducing. Planos. This word. This is where we get. We've we've seen this word a couple times. It come, this is where we get our word planet from, planos, and it means wanderer, wandering, sorry, roving, imposter, misleading. Now we talked about why we get our word planet from this. It's because plant, a planet is deceptive. When you look at a planet, it has light. But a planet doesn't give off light. It only accepts light. It reflects light. So the word planet, if you look it up, is a wandering star. That's what it is. And a deceiver is a wanderer. He's a rover. And so when we talk about that word planet, it's... Planos is... A person, an imposter, who looks like they have light, but they're only reflecting light. They're, all, it, they're, not, they're not children of light, you see? They're children of darkness reflecting light. That's it, you see? Now, spirits. Let me make sure I spell this word right. Pneuma. It's the 
same word as spirit. The spirit speaketh expressly. Now spirits, all, all the word spirit means is uh, breathe, breath. When you, all, all scripture is uh, inspired by God, breathe, God breathed, right? It's the same word, pneuma. Breath or a, uh, a movement of air. This gives you a different it gives you a different look when you think about a spirit being a ghost, right? Like people a lot of say, well, I've seen a spirit. Well, that's a ghost and a spirit. It's, it's not even the same thing. It's not even the same class. Anyways, so doctrines, all right? So let's read this again. The spirit speaketh specifically that in the last days people are going to attach themselves or give attention to Deceivers, imposters, they're going to be misled. Uh, these these uh, roving and wandering spirits, you see? And these, one, these seducing spirits are going to be teaching, teaching doctrines of devils. The word doctrine is didascalia. Watch this. It comes from the word... Didaskalos and didaska. So this word is um, instruction, just like the preacher said. This word is teacher. This word is to teach. Didaskalia doctrines is to is instruction. Instruction from a teacher. Devils. Now, I encourage you, I know I'm getting small here, but the word devils, we get the word devils is translated into demon, right? Demon is an English word. It, it doesn't exist in the Bible. The word is diamanion. It comes from diamond, which comes from dio. Now, When we think of demons, even if you look in the concordance, it says that a diamanion is an evil spirit. Right? And diamon, evil spirit. It says the same thing. But what's interesting is where this word comes from. Dio means to distribute fortunes. You know, think about think about the guy who was the, the lunatic who was running around in the tombs, cutting himself, breaking out of chains, all that screaming to the top of his lungs, right? Everybody can hear him. And he, when the Lord Jesus came to him, he said, what is your name? And he said, we are legion, right? Well, we talked about, now I know we're going a little deep here, but we talked about <clears throat> parsing. We talked about sentence structures. We talked about uh, past, present tense, you know, these, these English terms. And to simplify it, when the Lord Jesus was talking to this man and he said, we know who, you know, we are legion. When the Lord Jesus spoke back to him, he wasn't speaking to legion. If you parse the, if you parse the sentence and you, and you talk about the tenses and the mood of the sentence, he wasn't talking about the diamond or the legion. He was talking to the man. He was talking to the man. Now, I know that's an interesting thing to think about. But a lot of commentators and a lot of teachers believe that <clears throat> diamon or a demon is nothing but self. All right? Distributing fortunes means I'm walking through this world doing what I can to get everything I can. You see, it's a spirit of self. I want everything for myself. You see? So when we think about ghosts again, you see, when we think about these apparitions that show up and I see my mom, you know, or whatever, those kind of things. A lot of people say they have these things, but who knows what they are? I just want everybody here to go back and do a study on demon because it's interesting. I'm not, I'm not being dogmatic about anything. But I, I don't really believe, personally, that a demon or a diamond is 
exactly what we think it is. Because you really have to get into what the Lord Jesus is saying to these people. And you really have to get into what a spirit is and where that word came from. I'm going to leave it at that. But anyways, so they're going to be preaching doctrines of devils. And to add to that, are not all the prosperity preachers preaching about give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Let's, let's get this and let's get that. The way God makes us happy is he's going to give us stuff. You see? It goes right along with distributing fortunes. Mm -hmm. It goes right along with self. You see? It's pretty interesting. So. Could it, you know where it says Legion? I, I don't know where I've seen this, but it was in the Daily Bread or whatever. But uh, uh, theoretically, when it was speaking, you know, like you said, it was speaking of one individual, not because if, if I'm right, he said that we are many. Mm -hmm. And when he spoke that, he actually was lying even when he said that. They would actually use that one individual. You yes, said that in David Bray? Yes, I think it was. Well, wow, that's interesting. Yep. I mean, I've never read that, but I just go home and do a study on it. We can come back and discuss it because it is an interesting topic. But let's turn to Matthew. Let, let me read that one more time in these terms. The Spirit speaks in specific terms that in the last times some shall depart from the faith and be attracted to or attach themselves to uh, seducing or deceptive spirits and doctrines or the instruction of demons or devils. Matthew 24, let's turn that. sure to point out something as well. That when we're reading the Bible, we've talked about this before, that we need to understand who's talking. Who is talking. Sometimes it's the Lord Jesus talking. Sometimes it's the Bible talking. Right? Sometimes it's the perspective of the Jew. Sometimes it's the perspective of the disciple. There's all different ways that the Bible comes at you. And I'm going to give you an example. There's two verses here. Verse chapter chapter 24, verse 1 and 2, that just basically end. They, he, there's a saying, and then, there, and then it goes to a completely different episode. You see? It says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. This was a great, Herod's temple was this great big thing. And Jesus said unto them, See not... See ye not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I mean, that whole right, that right there is totally separate from what's about to happen. It goes straight into a different episode where he, where he says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, you see, it's, it's one minute they're walking by the temple and the disciples are like, look at this great building. And, G and the Lord Jesus is like, I just want to tell y'all that this is going away. Not one of these stones is going to be left here. Yeah. And next thing you know, it sh shifts over whatever time of day or whatever it may be. Now they're sitting on the Mount of Olives. So make sure as we're doing our Bible study, this is how you start understanding. Who's talking? Where are they at? What's the background? So here we go. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And it's very interesting. We said this last week before we left. The first thing that the Lord Jesus talks about the sign of his coming is Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. That's the first thing that he says. Then he starts talking about, for many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ and shall deceive many. And then he starts going into the wars and the rumors of wars and uh, nation shall rise against nation. But it's very interesting that the first thing he says is let not anybody deceive you. So we're going to break that down a little bit. Verse 4. The word deceive. Poneo. Poneo and Planos. Are of the same uh, 
word word group. It means to be led astray. The word name. So many will come in my name. This this word name, if you look at the origin of it, everybody knows who Shem is, right? Shem. Uh, Shem, Ham, and Jacob, right? The word Shem, that's the origin of this, this word right here, name. It means authority. It means authority or character. Many shall come in my authority. See? They're going to come saying that they're of me. Saying, I am the Christ, and they shall deceive many. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise up and deceive many. Who's going to do the deceiving? False prophets. The word false prophets, pseudo prophetes. Pseudo prophetes. So this word breaks down. I want you to watch how this breaks down. Pseudes. Pseudomai. This word pseudomai is to deliberately speak falsehood. To deliberately speak a falsehood is to lie. They're liars. That's what false means. Mm -hmm. We get caught up in this word false, but think about what it means today. He's a liar. He's a lying prophet, mm -hmm. right? What he says is a lie. You got to be clear on that. Prophetess comes from the word, well, the word pro means pre declare. He's a prophet, he declares beforehand. Right? So this false prophet is declaring beforehand the things of God, but they're all lies. He's coming in the name of the Lord Jesus, but everything he's saying that's of God is a lie. Everything. Right. So I want to take you to, let me ask you this first. As a Christian, how does a person... If we were to answer this, how does a person get deceived? And I think the preacher touched on it a little bit. But think about this. How do you get deceived? If you look, if you were to walk into the store with a counterfeit hundred dollar bill before they had the little marker to mark it, could you be, would you be able to buy groceries? Before they had the little marker, I brought a hundred dollar bill in there. You would, right? It looks identical. It looks the same. They have to actually take the pen and mark it with special chemical to get down in there to see that it's fake. You see? They have to dig into it. So the $100 bill example is exactly how people get deceived. It looks just like the real thing. Satan, you know, the real Satanist, the real Satanist in the world are not these people who dress up in black and light the candles and stand around the, and, and do all these rituals and things like that. That's not the real Satanist. The real Satanist is the one who looks just like a Christian yeah. and deceives people knowingly and does it like these guys do. They know they're doing it, but they look just like Christians and they'll be amongst the people or they'll be in the pulpit. And I remember when I told you do not judge a man by the way he talks intellectually and how eloquent he is. Because let me tell you, there are many false prophets who talk great. They talk awesome. So do not trust him by that. You always trust him by what he says out of the word of God. Who is it that will be doing the deceiving? Turn to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23 gives you a perfect picture. <laughs> What's that, sir? Church hour will pass. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so listen 
the mist. The question is, who is it that will be doing the deceiving? That's the question. Verse 23, verse, uh, chapter 23, verse 1, Jeremiah. It says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. Are we the sheep of God's pastor? Yes, we are. Um, and what he's saying is, woe to those who are leading the sheep. Now, we're going to, not all pastors are leading the sheep astray. But we're going to see. It says, therefore, saith, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. What does the pastors feed the people? The word of God. Legal sheep food. Right? You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you evil upon, uh, of your doings, saith the Lord. Then he gives a prophecy. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them and will bring them back again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. And then he goes into talking about the Lord Jesus and how the Lord Jesus is coming all the way down through. But we're going to go to verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourneth. The pleasant places in the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Here we go. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them a slippery ways in the darkness, and they shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them. Even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. I have seen the folly in the prophets of Sam uh, Sam uh, Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Remember, we have to look at these things as pictures, right? These are real things that happen, physical things that happen. But everything in the Old Testament is a picture of the New Testament. The New Testament is the very image of things to come. So when we're looking at this and the Lord is talking about the prophets and the, and the preachers and things like that, this is what's going to happen. This is exactly what's going to happen. They're going to deceive the flock. And they're going to cause Israel, spiritual Israel, to err. Yes? You know, I've got Ephesians 5, 6. Do not listen to false teaching. You need to seek God's word to know the scriptures. Because in Jeremiah 37, 9, to believe in false prophets is self-deception. So if we don't get into God's word, we're going to fall into it to be our own thoughts. <laughs> Very good. That's that's good. Continuing on. I have seen also the prophets of Jerusalem. A horrible thing. They commit adultery. They walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers. That none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom. And the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts concerning the prophets. Behold I will feed them with wormwood. Make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walks after the imagination, imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Let me tell you something. The same thing, we're going to talk about it a little bit next week. Hananiah is in Jeremiah as well. Hananiah says the same thing. He says, when they're about to get, Jeremiah has preached for 40 years. He's telling them, you are going to get taken off to Babylon. And you're going to be there for 70 years. Y'all better straighten up. You know, but the Lord told him, you're not praying for them. This is happening. That's it. And so Jeremiah went around preaching to everybody. Not one person got saved, by the way. Jeremiah spent 40 years. Not one person got saved. They all got taken away or some got killed. And Hananiah was going around saying, I'm telling you that you're going to go to Babylon, but you're only going to stay there for two years. What was he saying? Everything is okay. Just hang on. It's okay. What Jeremiah is saying is not right. What I'm saying is right. You're only going to be there for two years. Just have peace. And Jeremiah says, look, if you're right, then let it be so. But I'm telling you, no prophet or all the old prophets spoke of the wrath of God and not of peace. The only time that peace, that a prophet spoke of peace and it was true was when it came true. You see, that's what he said. 
And so he's saying the same thing right here. These prophets are saying, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walks after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Boy, that's complacency. That's the preachers and the prophets not admonishing the sheep. And we saw last week that the word admonish means to warn, to gently warn and caution people about getting into this state where they're listening to the people saying everything's going to be okay. Everything is the same as when the fathers were here. Nothing's changed. We're going to be drinking and, and marrying like as in the days of Noah. You see things like that. That's the way it's going to be. It's the way it's happening right now. Nobody's concerned about what God's doing. That's right. You see? Let's continue on. Verse 20, or about 19. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed, until he has performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days. You shall consider it perfectly. It shall be mature in the latter days, the last days. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they have stood my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil ways and from the evil of their doings. Verse 25. I have heard what the prophets say that prophesy lies in my name. Pseudo. Same word right there. And they say, I dreamed a dream. I'm, I'm, I'm having dreams. How long shall this... Uh, this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies. <coughs> Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor. As their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. You see, when you got these preachers out here and these pastors out here who are telling you, who, who don't even have a Bible on the pulpit. They just pick a verse and put it on a PowerPoint. And then they use that verse the whole time, but the whole time they're talking about prosperity in this world. You see? They're making people forget the name of God. That's right. Forget the words of God, which is right here in the open Bible. This is why I have an issue. I mean, we put these TVs up, but it's so everybody can hear it or see the letters and things like that. But I have an issue with a lot of PowerPoint presentations because... Um, Nobody has the Bible out. They're just looking off this. It's about getting in here. 28. The prophet that hath, dream, uh, that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff of the wheat, saith the Lord? Is it not my word, is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like the hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent not them, I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore... They shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. You have so many, and this has always been happening, but you got YouTube now. You have all, you have sermon audio. You have all these sermon places to find preachers and pastors all over the place who you'll hear consistently say, the Lord told me this today. Mm -hmm. The Lord said this to me today. And then it will be contrary to the word of God. Right? And a lot of people are so unlearned and ignorant of things that when they hear that God talked to him and he had a dream, but it has nothing to do with the word of God, they follow this people. They follow this man because he says it's from God. Remember that the word God is a general term. It's a general term. Allah is the Muslim's God. Krishna is their God. There's little G gods all over the place. They call them God. You see? So do not trust a man who says God either. Make sure that it's the God of the Bible. You understand that? So verse 29. 
So the priests, the prophets, the preachers, the pastors, the bishops, the apostles, so-called today the apostles, these are the ones who are going to deceive. Yes. Um, I noticed the word likeness there. Is the, that meaning sort of a, a lack of any substance? Is it, is like that because that's how I read it. Is that like what it means in this context? I'll have, I'll have to look that word up. I'm not sure, but I mean, just by the look of it, it does look like it's thirty-two by their lies and by their likeness. It just seems to me as though like you could hear a lot of uh, cotton candy. Yeah, fluff, cotton candies. A lot, a lot of fluff, a lot of like stuff right. that really it doesn't mean anything. It's not you know, it's just what people want to hear. Exactly. But it has no substance to it. It exactly. has no. It's it's like the air. Exactly, you know, it's, mm -hmm. which Makes the sense. air is amazing, right? The air is a spirit yeah. breathed, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> but so I just really like how that's like sort of equated with lies, right? Lies and that fluffiness, easy to, we talk about this being the, that it's palatable, right? It's easy to chew on. The word of God is not easy to chew on. <laughs> it's not. And we talked about this before as well, that it, it, it's, it should, because of your flesh, offend you in a way. We are joyful because we have obtained salvation, but the Word of God is preaching at you, and it talks to you, and it tells you what to do, and it tells you what you're doing wrong, and it hurts because it's the truth, and the truth separates, and that's exactly what these people don't want. They don't want separation. They want unity. You see, they want masses amount of people because they are making merchandise, so the Bible says, out of these people. So... Now, we see how people are going to be deceived because they're going to look exactly like gospel preaching preachers, ministers of righteousness, because Satan comes as a minister or a, uh, an angel of light. But they're plain us. Where's that? They're plain us. They look like light, but they're not light. How is it that we'll be, who is it that will be doing the deceiving? We saw in Jeremiah 23, and we can continue to go all over the place. People who are claiming to be the prophets of God, and they're coming and saying things that are contrary to the word of God. Making people forget the words of God, making people forget his name, preaching lightness and lies. Now how do they deceive? Turn to 2 Peter 16. I'll read 15, 15 through 17. So this is Peter talking about the Apostle Paul. He says, An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all of his epistles, speaking in, the, in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You see that word rest? Can anybody tell me what they believe that means? Let me read it again. In which are some things hard to understand, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Yes. Does that mean to struggle? Doesn't mean to struggle. Watch this. Strableo means to. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Now let's read it again. Yeah. And also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which they who are unlearned and unstable twist, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Yeah, the ESV actually uses the word twist. Does it? ESV? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Let's read verse 17 right quick. Anything that was said to us? 
Yep. Is that what you're saying? Let's read verse 17 right quick. Okay. You therefore, beloved, who's the beloved? The elect of God, yeah. Christians. These things are you know these things before. Beware, lest or unless you also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. He is warning you that these people, these people right here, are doing this. They are counterfeit, deceiving people who are going to come and twist the word of God and deceive people. Mm -hmm. That word twist and that word strableo means like this. You, after you get done washing dishes or whatever, you take your rag and you go like this. Mm -hmm. And you wring it out. That's exactly what these people are doing. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see. This is the end of the in introduction. But as we come in next week, you're going to see how this is possible. How is it that these people can take this word right here and twist it in a way to get people to believe them? Mm -hmm. To be so closely related and so look so much like the real thing. How is it that even the elect, if it were possible, will be deceived? Mm -hmm. It's got to be so close to the real thing. But we don't know how that happened. So next week, we're going to be tapping into Babylon, the seat of all idolatry. We're going to be tapping into Babylon and see, and we're going to be tapping into the ancient Near East a little bit. Because if you didn't know, in every culture on this earth, there's a triune God. There's a, tri there's a trinity. Did y'all know that? If you go around to all these ancient, uh, all the ancient sculptures or writings or in Rome, the Vatican, they have these beings with three heads. They come way back. Babylon. You see? There's always been a trinity. There's always been a father, son, Holy Spirit. They just call it different things. You see? And as you start studying the Old Testament, you'll start seeing that the Jews were right into this sun worship, worshiping groves, worshiping all these things. And because of that, there was a twisting of the word of God. And it was leading a lot of people astray. So we're going to get into a lot of that stuff. To end tonight. Yes, sir. I just like to share. I, I was wrong when I told you I told you the daily bread. What it was, I was going to find the uh, a verse for the day in my smartphone, which I'm not as smart as my phone. But anyway, it tells in there about the legion of angels. He said there were many, and they, he allowed them to go into the swines and run down the steep hill. But he said in that, and through that, it said that they were actually blind on that because it wasn't as of many legions. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to clarify that it wasn't in the day. Uh, what kind of day? No. Okay. So that's true in just the tiniest tweak of the word. Absolutely. So that's how they do it. It don't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot. This is why I showed this. This is why I showed this in the beginning. And there were, because it's so easily twisted. If you know history, if you know how, they, how they've been able to do it all the way up until now. And being able to draw people in. There is seducing spirits. It's been happening forever. But we must understand that you have to dig in. That was the whole point of this. It had nothing to do with that. You, you have to dig in. Simple truths like this have to be dug into. And the reason they do is because these people are twisting the word of God in a way that will make you believe it. But if you understand the word of God, understand what you're reading, dig into it, pray about it, have God give you a discerning spirit, you will be able to um, discern what's going on. You, and to tell you the truth, the children of God... It says, if it were possible, they will be deceived. It's not going to be possible. But we must, we must uh, be keen. We must be watchful. And we must be in this word. Because it's coming harder and faster. Now, I want to show you all a video. And I want to show you a video right quick. Of how, um, as we lead into next week, and we lead into Babylon next week. And where these things came from. 
how it is that people who are from other religions, uh, other backgrounds, whatever, who have never been a Christian, use the same exact words as Christianity does. Celebrities. I don't know if everybody in here should know who Jim Carrey is. Yeah. Everybody knows who Jim Carrey is. Yeah. No. Jim Carrey has had some traumatic things happen to him over the last year or couple years. And he has went into this, we talked a little bit about this, the Christ consciousness thing. The world unity, the world peace, we all need to come together. The pantheistic, uh, where God is everything. He's went into this. But listen to the words he says. And people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, and they don't know this word, will listen to this man and believe what he says. Because they don't know any better. Go ahead. Get them lights too. Now this event, uh, once he gets started there, this event that he's at is a thing called Homeboy Productions or something like that. What it is is they bring in jail, uh, people from jail and they rehabilitate them. So he's at this meeting. It's about seven minutes long. Right?
that's what opens the gates of heaven for all of us. So I wish that for all of you, I wish that for myself. I know that you know, no matter what I've suffered, most of you have suffered worse than that. But that's why I admire you, because you're here. You know? And you will have rest. So glad to be with you and uh, to be a part of this. Thank you, Father Craig. Thank you, Father Craig. It's not done yet. It's not done yet. Look at this shirt. You can read it. It says, it says mentally gone. Mentally gone. That's what this shirt says. You guys are good for me, man. Thing to consider. Uh, it shouldn't be, but it's a, it's a very strange concept to most people, and especially people that suffer trauma and uh, have trust issues or whatever, to, to trust that they can close their eyes for a moment or a couple of moments during the day and, and let go uh, of the show that's going on in their heads. Now, we, we are so trapped, all of us, especially those who have suffered terrible trauma, uh, to think of that as a real thing. And there is a difference between real and imagination. And it's hard to turn that off. And uh, meditation, for me, and for a lot of people, uh, has been a way to turn that off. You know? And for recognizing those thoughts are those thoughts. And uh, like clouds that cross the sky, uh, they will pass on. And, uh, and to gently pull yourself back to a place of peace. And just to stop the spiral of thought, man. We get up in the morning and, and we open our eyes and the show begins, you know? And it's a thrill for some people. And, and you can't help but get caught up in it. And it's important. A couple of times during the day, stop and go, wait, this is just as real as those thoughts. I am bigger than these thoughts. I'm bigger than this body. You know, they talk about all depressions in church, and nobody really thinks about what that means. What it means is every cell of your body is God. Everything is God. Everything is divine. So when you do good things, when you decide to transcend the negativity and an attempt to do something positive for you, for your family, you are the heart of God. You are the eyes of God. When you speak from that place, you are God's voice. And when you make a loaf of bread in this place, in this kitchen, that is the Eucharist. You're blessing people with your work. You're serving the world with your work, with your effort. That is the Eucharist. That is the body of Christ. Yeah. And I thank you for everything you're doing. You're amazing. You're champions. I admire you. What it sure says, mentally gone. Yeah. What that says, that that, that's all rehab. <laughs> and you cut that light off. So, let me tell you, how many words did he use that Christians use? A lot. Right? He used the body of Christ, he used the Eucharist, he used grace and peace and forgiveness and suffering, salvation heaven, right? He used all these same words, but his message was way off. Was it not? It was way off. He was saying that every cell in you is God and that you are divine and, right? We talked about that a little bit in here. But the fact is, and he also said the only way to salvation is to realize your suffering. Things like that, right? 
I want to, before we leave, I want to show you guys this. And i got to look at my piece of paper here to break this down. But he said the only way to salvation, the Lord Jesus says, that the way is straight. Enter ye into the straight gate. He kept on saying, you got to enter into the gate of forgiveness, man. you got to enter. You see, this is the gate we've got to enter into. Well, the Lord Jesus is the gate that we enter into. And he says that the, the gate is straight and narrow is the way. Right? Yeah. These people, Satan, will use people who are prominent, people we know, people, celebrities, right? That one time you're like, hey, Jim Carrey is the funniest guy alive. He's, you know, and he's got some, you know, okay movies, you know, whatever. But then he completely, a trauma happens to him. And he completely flips. And now he's telling these people, going through trauma is, is the way, you know, he, he's basically making trauma sound like a bad thing. And suffering is a bad thing. But I want you all to watch this. The way. Narrow is the way. Right? The word narrow, this was amazing when I saw this. We talked about a straight gate. People think it's a straight line. That's not it. It's a straight. It's where two islands meet and it's right. just a real thin yeah. place where you squeeze into, right? That's a straight. Narrow as well. Is, and these preachers preach wide gate. Everybody's, right? That's the way they preach. But the narrow is this word, Philebo. This is going to astonish you. It comes from the word, Trebos. Which means a worn path or track. And it also means, this is the word in the Old Testament, a worn path. In the New Testament, it means afflict, suffer, tribulation, throng. And it comes from the word, this word Philemo comes from the word, we all know this word, trauma. Which we know what trauma is. And then it comes from the word, truo, which means crush. same word as tribulation and suffering. The way, the narrow way, is the tribulation way. It's the suffering way. It's the traumatic way. It's the thronging way. It's to be crushed. That's the way. That's the narrow way. Is that Matthew 7, 14? Where it says straight and gate, narrow narrow's way. the way. Leads life that you buy there by it. Narrow is the way. That word narrow, this is what it means. Traumatic way, a worn path to suffer some persecution, to be afflicted, to be thrown, to be crushed. That's what it means. We talked about the prophets, the true prophets of God, and every time you see one, a true one, they die. Why? Because they're speaking truth. Because they are on the narrow way. Mm -hmm. This is our lot as a Christian right here. What he's talking about is false. Mm -hmm. He's using all the terminology, and he's using it in a way. That it's a lot of times, he may have skimmed through the Bible, but it seems like he's able to just use these things real softly. And he's talking to these criminals, you know, who are trying to get rehabilitated. But he's, he's telling them that, look, suffering, you know, well, you got to meditate and get, get rid of that stuff and all that. But this is our lot. This is what, this is what we're supposed to do. He's saying that the way is not that way. This is the way yeah. to suffer. That is the way. And how, so I'm going to end it here tonight and say, how does Jim Carrey know these terms? How is Jim Carrey able to preach a completely different doctrine to these people and use the same words that come out of the Bible? How is that possible? His writers already wrote it for him. Well, I mean, it seemed like he was just freestyling up there. It, it didn't seem like he was speeching. There it was. That's yep. all we have tactics. It's universal beliefs, and they use the Bible and they intertwine it all together. 
Tell me one term. Well, there, there's a couple of the same terms, peace and mercy and suffering, things like that. But Christ, Eucharist are not in the Quran. They're not in the Eastern mysticism writing. No. It is in the Bible. Yep. You see? And he's using these things. Just, I mean, it just seems like he's just easily going along. And it's easy, it's very palatable the way he's talking. But that's not the way the Bible speaks. The Bible speaks that we must suffer to be a Christian. And they will preach against that in a very subtle and twisted way. Let's pray. Our Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to come here again and learn some things out of your word. We do glorify you, Lord Jesus, tonight. And I pray that everything that we learn here, that first of all, it would glorify you, and that you would put it in our hearts to meditate and ponder on this when we go home, to be looking for these things. To understand that we are living in a time now that is very, very deceptive. And I pray that you help us, that you would give us a discerning spirit, that you would allow us to prove everything, test the spirits. Because many people are using your words and they're twisting them and causing a lot of your people to stray. I pray in this church. Lord, that you would allow, that you would help the leadership to teach the people in this church and to warn and admonish, to caution people to test everything, even the preacher, even the teacher. Words are very important. Lord, it was spoken word that you spoke everything into existence. And so I pray that you help us, lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit. <coughs> As we continue to do this study, I pray that you give us a, a more keen sight, not only to all this deception going on, but to our sin as well, because sin is deceptive as well. I pray that you forgive us where we fail you, and I pray that you help us as we go home, keep us safe, help us protect our families, and I pray that you protect our families, Lord from the deception that is coming upon this earth. I pray all these things in the Lord Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen.